Hello everyone, this is chapter 6, Human Capital Education, part 3. And in this part, we are focusing on the human capital investment and we are going to talk about formal schooling decision, how do we make that decision, and we'll learn about present value calculations in this context. Let's get started. So human capital accumulation is an investment of time and money, okay? You have to conduct a cost-benefit analysis to see if it is a worthwhile investment. That's really important. It's not optimal for everybody. So present value calculation is based on the premise that $100 today is not equal to the $100 in one year. So if I ask you, would you like $100 today or would you like me to give you $100 in one year? Okay, which one would you choose? I would choose $100 today because I could take that $100, put it in an account and get uh, with the interest yielding account at least and get my money, the $100 plus the interest earnings, okay? So $100 today is not equal to, it doesn't equal to um, $100 in one year. $100 today becomes, let's say, $105 tomorrow if the interest rate, real interest rate is 5%, okay? So we have to do future value, present value calculations. Future value is present value dollars in T years with the interest rate R, okay? So future value is whatever you're putting in present value dollars that PV dollars could be 100 times 1 plus interest rate if it's next period. If this is in T periods, 5 years, then you have to add T as a power, 1 plus R. Okay, future value is present value dollars 100 times 1 plus R raised to the power, however years we are talking about further in the future. Okay, so if it's uh, 1 year, you just have 1 here. So what's the present value? To find the present value, you divide both sides with 1 plus R raised to the power T. So it's future value divided by 1 plus R raised to the power T. So R is the per period discount rate. FV is the future value. And T is the number of time periods. So let's say I have $5,000 in five years. Okay. So $5,000 in five years, what's the value of it today if the interest rate is, again, 5%. Okay, so 1 plus 0 0.05 raised to the power 5. If you calculate this, you will find that $5,000 in five years is not, it is not $5,000 today. It's going to be much less. The same thing applies to actually those scratch-off lottery tickets in the U.S. we have. It guarantees you $1,000 per week. It says forever, right? But it has a 20-year cap. $1,000 per week in 20 years is not $1,000 per week today. Okay, so something to think about. All right, let's talk about formal schooling decision. What's the benefits of formal schooling? Increased future earnings. So if you care about future, it's definitely something to think about. Let's talk about the cost of college. We have direct expenses of college, which includes tuition and books. We also have indirect expenses of college, foregone earnings while in college. This is the opportunity cost of your time. Why? Because you could be getting a full-time job instead of going to college and started your career. Okay. So let's say EC is the annual earnings of a college graduate. EH is the annual earnings of a high school graduate. T is the remaining years until retirement. C is the direct cost of college. This is the monetary cost. We're not talking about psychic or psychological costs. So assume that college lasts for one period, even though it's four years, but assume that it's uh, counted as one period and let's see our little uh, graph our little chart potential earnings streams faced by a high school graduate so we have dollars on the y-axis we have age in the x-axis this is a high school graduate at age 18 that's the period zero right 
I have two years till I retire. Okay, so if the individual quits after high school, quits education after high school, this person will make EH earnings for high school graduates till the day of starting work, till this person retires. A person who quits school after getting her high school diploma can earn EH from age 18 till retirement. If she decides to go to college, she forgoes those earnings. So for one period, you're giving up EH and incurs a cost of C dollars for one period, then earns EC until retirement. So for first period where you're enrolled in college, you are actually earning negative C, which means that's the cost of college. But after that period, you go to college, you are making after period one EC, which is higher than EH. So this is the benefits of going to college that materializes after period one till retirement. Every year you make EC minus EH more. And this is the cost of going to college. One foregone earnings, EH first period and the cost, direct cost of college. So let's use present value calculations to work on this example. So let's say you only completed high school education and decided not to go to college. So this is the present value of high school education. Okay. So you make EH earnings with high school degree this period, period uh, zero to one. And... In the first period, EH, you discount it with 1 plus R because one period discount. You discount the period in second uh, one to the period zero while you're in high school. So we are discounting everything. We're discounting this earnings to period zero. So the income you made during this period, second, third, fourth, so period T, you discount that income to the period zero, T minus one period between that period and that one. So because remember, first period, second period, second to one, third to first period, and T period T income to the first period. Okay, so T minus one periods. Okay, what if? You went to college. So that's coming up, but I want to show you something. So EH, you leave it by himself. You can put all these terms in EH parentheses, right? EH parentheses from first term, it will give you 1 over 1 plus R. From the second term, you have 1 over 1 plus R raised to the power 2. From this term, the last term you get 1 over 1 plus r t minus 1. Okay, so we are just putting it in a nicer form. What's the present value of your lifetime earnings, costs and benefits? If you go to college, so first period, you are not making money. You are actually losing C dollars, negative C. We are not discounting it to the first period. Then... Starting from second period till the end of time to your retirement of T years, you make EC. Okay, so you will go to college if and only if present value of going to college exceeds the present value of going to high school, right? It's greater than present value of high school. So you write everything down. This is the present value of going to the first term on the left is the present value of going to college. Negative C, EC in parentheses, this term. If it's greater than EH, high school earnings as a high school graduate in the first period, plus this discounted present value of this income streams till you retire. Okay. So let's pull everything in one side. How about we keep this term in the, on the left-hand side and move this term to the left-hand side and have EH stay here, but move negative C to the other side, okay? So when you do that, you have EH, EC, sorry, EC minus 
EH, this positive sign becomes negative, moving to the left hand side. In parentheses, times this discounting term, greater than, this is earnings in the first period plus the cost of college in the first period. Okay, so the left hand side is going to be the pre present value of benefits of going to college net of high school. So this is all the benefits of going to college net of high school. And right hand side is going to be the cost of going to uh, going to college. Direct cost is C dollars plus indirect cost is lost earnings you could make for one period as a high school graduate. So what would make the probability of going to college higher? So what would make this left hand side even greater and right hand side smaller, right? More likely to go to college if EC is higher. Okay, that's obvious. If EC goes up, college earnings go up, lifetime earnings, you're more likely to go to college. If high school earnings go up, uh, go down, then the left hand side actually gets larger, right? Because negative something shrinking, negative sign, it's actually increasing the left hand side. Not only that, but if EH is going down, right hand side is shrinking at the same time, which makes this relationship stronger. If C goes down, you're more likely to go to college. Again, common sense. Co direct cost of college goes down, you're more likely to go to college. What about the discount rate? If discount rate is lower, that means you value future a lot, right? Use your logic. If discount rate is lower, you discount future uh, less. So you're more likely to go to college. It, it's also, you can see it from here. R is lower. R is something that's in the denominator bottom so r is lower this what happens to this this is lower one over something this is going to grow so each term is going to be larger here one over one plus r will be a larger number as r gets bigger so that's something we want how about t if t goes up that means if you have a lot of years for your retirement till you retire College education is more advantageous because you actually take advantage of those higher earnings for a longer period of time. So these are the determinants that will make you more likely to go to college. So I will see in part four about how to estimate the returns to formal schooling. See you then.